Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl and yeah. And your boy, Stella. And All I'm right. living my best life. Hey. Charlie should have told them farmers I ain't got time to bother with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm <living> my <laughs> but anywho. <sighs> Woosa. If you are not a family member, which means you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And while you're doing that, make sure your bell is pressed in. That way you will get notifications when we come through with a mobile one. And go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. At this point, it doesn't even matter. E. You've already been counted. Exactly. So, um, the horizon leans forward. I'm going to say this right out the bat, and then we can get right into it, and we can continue this conversation on down in the um, comments. E. When we gonna win? Yeah. Why we always? Why we in this fixed fight? Yeah, that you would have lost before you even got there. Okay, we gonna go right there. I'm not even gonna deal with a whole lot of the fluff. But what had happened was, Prosper had went ahead and let Charlie know. Listen, the farmers already know. Well, this one particular farmer already know about you. You know, and this whole thing, and they're calling you a hypocrite. So Charlie went ahead and um. Confessed to Mr. Prosper. She said, you know what? I had to go ahead and, and sell Queen Sugar Mill. He was like, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> what? So you've been, you've been lying this whole time? And she, you know, she explained the whole reason and why she did it. She said, you know, I sold it so that I could have, you know, leverage. So that I can leverage rates and fair rates and stuff. So that the farmers could continue to mill and farm. You know, do that thing. Yeah, so y'all can survive. So Mr. Prosper was like, hmm. I, I know what you did, but this ain't gonna go over well. So, Cause he was trying to get her to speak at the um council meeting. at the council meeting. Yeah. She was like, mm, this may not be yeah. a good idea. Uh -huh. Because she knew that she started speaking immediately, this heckler would have came up and just, you know, exposed everything. Exactly. So that was kind of smart play. So they get over there, and Mr. Callahan, he's pitching the idea of the prison and what it's going to do for the community. This, that, and the third. You're going to have jobs, and then those jobs are going to explode into, they had like a five-year program mm -hmm. where they were going to basically take over the city. They're going to do this, do that. Everybody going to have jobs. Then you're going to need school because everybody got jobs. They're having sex and reproducing babies, so the babies got to go somewhere. They got to go to school. So, a bunch of bugs get that he talking. Charlie had had he freak enough. Yeah. Of all the bull skit that he was spilling. And he started talking about some, you know what, here's a letter from someone who said they couldn't find a job. Their husband or son or somebody couldn't find a job. But when we brought the prison to the, the Charlie said, like, and you proud of that? Charlie said, let's go ahead and cut the skit right here. Yeah. What you're doing is basically you have this little generic letter that you take from town to town mm -hmm. with you, pitching the idea of these prisons, getting people all hopeful. But have you ever told them that the jobs that you were trying to present to these people are minimum wage paying jobs? Yep. And then on top of that, you're going to milk free labor out of everyone that, that you goes lock up. In there. Yep. So basically there's going to be a few people that's actually even going to get those paid jobs. And when they do their minimum yep. paid jobs. And she basically told him, you know what? And while she's talking smack to Mr. Callahan, you got the farmer over there heckling Charlie talk about so yeah, she don't know what she talking about. So he's just over there doing his thing. He heckling everything that Charlie says. He has a rebuttal for it. Mm -hmm. He was like, you did this, you did that. And she had to go ahead and read him his rights in front of everybody to clear the air so that yeah. we don't ever have to have this conversation on ever again. Exactly. She said, what I did, I didn't do it for myself. I, I did, did it for y'all. And I would give her and say, Charlie, go ham. Go ham. Fuck y'all. I did all of this ever since yeah. I came down here. I've been doing stuff for y'all and y'all ungrateful motherfuckers ain't doing nothing but sitting back complaining. And when I try to do something to fix it, exactly. if it don't go right, y'all complaining. But next thing, y'all ain't did skit. Ain't did nothing. The only thing, thing you did do was organize to get the people from South Carolina to come to this meeting. To vote. To vote. Because y'all used to that. Because y'all used to yeah, doing that church. church. <laughs> So after Charlie had said what she had to say to Mr. Callahan, she said, listen, take your little snake oil, tuck it up, and slither your way right up on out of here. Because we don't want, we don't want what you offer. offer. Exactly. I said, okay, where this is going to go? And I'm like, if you want to bring some stability to the town, why not bring shopping malls, stores? Now, he said the venture, they're going to bring all that. Bring, they got to lock you up first. Yeah, bring that if you want to make a difference. 
Hell, the way people are so controversial about Super Walmart, you got one of yeah. those. So, like you said, the whole whole deal was to be able to make a profit off of free labor. Mm-hmm. Modern day slavery. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Exactly what it is. So, you know, they had to take this, you know, this break. They had to go in for the votes and whatever. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this on up so I can move out of this. So, Charlie's in the bathroom. And uh, Mama Bo um, Boudreaux comes in the bathroom. And I'm sitting here trying to still figure out was what she, team was she, is she Yeah, where's she coming from? Because, I don't know. Because she told him, said, told Charlie, she said, you know what? All may not be lost. You know, basically it's in the count in the um hands of the council members, but there is one council member, council member ward, usually sides on the side of right, usually will go with us. And I said, Who is us? Yeah, who is us? Yeah. Because we don't know who you're playing for. Yeah, right is now. it is it the people in the crowd or the oh. us or the family? Yeah. So she was like, you know, if it, we have a chance, we we have a chance, we have a, we, what she said, we have hope. We have hope. So Charlie said, hmm, hope. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's something my daddy used to always pitch us when there was evil lurking on the outside of the door. Yep. So basically Charlie knew right then and there. And Mom Boudreaux, she caught it too. This is bucked. We're bucked. Yeah. I, and, and on top of that, I listened to you the last time. Where you said we have a good chance of overthrowing my brother with getting no shares from from old dude. Don't only get there for the fall through. They don't already vote it. Ain't. Yep. So they get out there and it's a four to three vote. Four for the prison and three um an opposer in the prison. And Ward voted for the prison. Yep. Which we already knew she was. So everybody will the black folk are devastated. Yeah. Everybody's sitting there, they're just like in this state of shock. Like, I can't believe that this really just happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like, one thing about Queen Sugar, it just makes you think about a whole lot of skit. Yeah. And I started thinking about this guy doing election, or this guy doing um, this orange thug that we have in the White House. And no matter how we voted, and we voted, Yep. And we won. We won. The fight was fixed. Yeah. The fight was fixed. So it makes people start not doing it the way they should be doing it. Exactly. Because the results are never on our side. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, it just had me and my they got doing Phyllis. Because I was like, okay, they did everything they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Poor child. If don't nobody else get a win, Charlie needs, needs a guy doing win. win. Yeah. She done came down here from her life being wrecked upside down. down. Yep. And try to make a difference in the lives of these people that turn around and let the Landry's and the Boudreaux scare them off that she had to end up selling the business that she worked hard to establish for them. And then when she found out she sold it, then they still ain't happy. And now her son in trouble. And then when she get up to speak a good word, they clap and I said, no, sit your A down. They don't say the heckler, sit your A down. Don't you say nothing. Don't say nothing. You and your boy. Yeah. I guess say something. Right said so back then you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. Now y'all alone. Uh huh. They said don't you ask me for no. Don't ask me to grind. No. Don't nothing. ask me to negotiate no goddamn rates over there. That don't ask me skit. Yep. Cause you showed me the the blackest part of your arm parts. Yeah. And I ain't kissing it. So anywho. And the bad part with this whole situation, if if there don't be no turnaround, no farmers lose their businesses and can't grind. They're gonna be the ones working at that prison. That's the plan. Hello? Yeah. That's the plan. Because what else is gonna get a job at unless they move out? Yeah. And you know when they do stuff like that, they can come through and take you down doing land and if they want to. In the mid domain. But I wonder if they all band together and say, you know what, you bring the prison here, we gone. All of us. Gone. Yeah. And I uh, I forgot on my twisted life report, she reminded me of that. I said, that's true. They mm -hmm. can come in and take your skit. Yeah. They sure can. Because mm -hmm. um, technically you don't own your land. Kinda, you you yeah. you pretty much renting it from them. Yeah. Don't pay your taxes. And see what happened to you. And see what happened to you. You be at an auction. 25 foot about us. So mm -hmm. we went to the mayor with dreams in his hair. Yeah. So. <laughs> over there at, um, I'm going to go backwards a little bit. My vibe has Nova and Charlie over there at the house. She says it right off the bat that 
y'all been tiptoeing around each other mm -hmm. y'all been being extra cordial with each other what the buck what's yeah. going on with y'all because um i vibe, you know took a little break to start doing the seating chart so that she can give hollywood what he needs so he can go ahead and do this um extravagant wedding and this guy doing um reception and charlie was like leave me a seat because i might have me a plus, plus one, one. So um, I was like, well, how about you know over this mystery man? And that's when everybody started being real awkward. Mm -hmm. And she said, hold on, what is going on here? Tell me what's going on. Well, it came out that the guy that she was messing with was Remy. And Aunt Vi went ham. She said, hold on, I didn't never take you as somebody that would want to be <laughs> taking your sister's sloppy <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I said, ooh, hmm. okay. So Nova, she said, you know what, Unvi, it was a mistake. Haven't you made a mistake that you feel bad, feel bad about? Yep. You know, them old heads ain't gonna never admit they nothing like that. that. Mm -mm. But the part that tripped me out was when <laughs> Charlie was like, you know, I'm gonna have my plus one. How about you, Nova? Oh, I don't need a man to prop me up. What the hell does that mean? Yeah. What the? If, if you had never got caught. You would have had him right there. Exactly. Him and his 10 gallon hat. Exactly. I said, okay. So, I basically told Nova, first my brother. Now and I, this. And now this. I don't <laughs> even know who you are anymore. I told you to go find yourself, but it seemed like you just finding too much right now. I just wish that the, the all them fingers that on Vibe pointing at, all of them, the whole family, care. every time somebody do something, she go ham on them. I know she see the, all them fingers pointing back at yourself. Sure. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. That pride is a motherfucker. So, because our vibe was featured on Wake Up um, Nola, and she's getting all these power orders and whatnot. So, she's in there trying to fulfill those power orders, and all of a sudden, she can't breathe. She's having really bad chest pains. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, here we go with the whole. Y'all gonna stop bucking with our vibe too. She, yeah. I have a love hate relationship for her, but what y'all gonna stop doing is messing with her. Yeah. So she ended up having to go to the hospital and come to find out what was it called? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, humanitis. Yeah. Humanitis. Humanitis. And basically, you have inflammation of the lungs, which, mm -hmm. you know, when you have lupus, you know, your body just starts attacking itself. Yep. And she was at home with Hollywood. They were laying in the bed. So now you have. Charlie, Rick, not Remy, mm. Charlie, yeah. uh, Raw, and uh, Nova. Mm -hmm. And she ended up having to tell the rest of them because Nova knew I had lupus. I've been hiding from y'all for a few months now. Nova's been helping me with my diet, you know, trying to make sure that we try the holistic route first. You know, this is a part of the process. You know, I have medicine that's going to help fight the inflammation. I just, I'm going to be all right. I'm just going to have some bumps in the road. I really like how they're bringing light to lupus. Because, yeah. you know, a whole lot of times you don't... I've never heard of humanitis. No, i never heard you of that You know, either. you hear about different parts of, you know, of lupus and where mm -hmm. it can affect this, that, the throat, your, your joints. And yeah. you know, some people, you know, it affects their heart. Mm -hmm. um, I actually watched this girl on YouTube. Um, she's in the hospital now and, if, and it causes her to have sarcoidosis. Mm. Where... The scarring of your um, lungs and she's waiting for two lungs you know transplant lungs wow so i'm like goodness so i was glad that they brought that up it's a teachable but, moment but they were upset that she held that from them and they brought up a good point what if something had happened to you in our presence we would have never known what to do for example yeah at when she when she did what she did at, at when she was making the pies yeah and i'm thinking them girls didn't know what was going on with her either because i don't think she told them that she got lupus so, I mean, I mean, the yeah, first reaction was they took her to the hospital. I mean, which they still should have, even if you knew yeah. what was going on. But that's, that's, that, that's that generation do that. They, oh, they yeah. don't, yeah, you know, y'all don't tell us nothing. Mm -hmm. You just, you just hold it to yourself. And then when we find and, out, it's too late. Yeah, it's too late. We can't do nothing about it. We probably can't do nothing about it anyway. But we can but talk about sensitivity. Yeah, but you want us to tell you everything, but you want to hold everything from us. Let him lead you. Huh? So it, it, we gotta play fair here. <laughs> we gotta do what? <laughs> we got to play. We got to play fair. Yeah, you need to let us know that vital information there, Miss Vi. 
So the kid is volunteer because, you know, if I was like, you know, what I can't do is lay up in this bed and feel sorry for myself and feel bad. I got to get up mm -hmm. and finish these power orders. So the kids was like, you know what? We got this. We're going to yeah. go ahead and go in there and, and crank this out. And I'm saying, do y'all know how to do them like she do them? But anyway, I knew I knew Nova did. Though, Nova so did. No, yeah. She put some weed in it. Don't nobody care. <laughs> they get addicted to the pies. It's but all good. I, I miss that kind of that that family unit like that. Oh, me too. Where I think a lot of us have gotten so independent in our own lives that not saying that family ain't a priority, but like back in the day, you know, if something happened like that, a whole family would pitch in and make sure you good. But now we don't even know what's going on with each other because we all separate in our own household. Mm -hmm. We come together yeah. for tragedies, and, weddings. Mm -hmm. So we don't have challenge. pride and be like, you know, we going through something. We don't tell nobody. So the fingers are pointing back at us too and pointing right back at y'all too. So y'all got stuff going on and the rest of your family don't know what's going on until all the skit hits the wall. See, we, won't, we don't know that you, that, you, that, you, that you can't make your car payment until the repo man comes. And then I got to help you get it out yeah. the repo. Now, now, see, versus you come and telling me that you're a month behind, you like three months behind, so you got you owe them $900. <laughs> It'd be a whole lot easier to come out with the 300 than the 900 bruh. Well, but, I ain't want to worry you, bruh. <laughs> but I ain't want to worry you. Know, I try to work it out myself. But you know when you was going into the second month that you ain't, that worked, you, it that you ain't worked it out. But see, what I, but I wonder if our family unit got to the point where we don't feel comfortable enough Mm -hmm. To approach our family to ask, I them. don't because what you're not gonna do is do this, you yeah. Gonna hold that over my head, yeah. Like I told you a long time ago, I don't care if we as broke as a joke and we only got one Ritz cracker and a square of cheese, we're gonna split that cracker two ways. But that's that pride, cheese. though. It, it, like, bag it, I it, pray for like it. the book of Proverbs says, Solomon said, Pride always comes for destruction, and that's it's destroying us, man. Pray, pray, pray from it. Yeah, pray for me too. Come the same way. <laughs> you all same way too. Pride is getting ready to destroy all of us. Yeah, just like he's doing on by pride. Well, I'm gonna tell you where she had a humbling moment at when she had to get in that guy doing bathtub mm -hmm. and Hollywood had to freaking wash her up. That was a powerful scene too. It is a powerful scene and it hit me to my guy doing core because yeah. I don't been there. Uh-huh. And it's the most humbling thing that could ever happen to a person. But I'm but it's right the there most, for you though. But it's the most depressing thing that could ever happen to a person for a person like me. If that was a permanent situation for me, I don't know if I can mentally break um bounce back from that. I really don't think I could do it. I think you could. No, I would be so messed up mentally because I can't have. But you blessed to have. I'm blessed a, to have a man that's willing to do that for you. There's some men and some women that when they husband or wives break down and can't function no more, they hit the road to the next one. I'm not saying I'm not blessed. I'm saying I need prayer. Yeah, <laughs> they gonna pray for you. <laughs> They gonna pray for you. <laughs> gonna pray for you. But I, but I was thinking about from Hollywood standpoint, he haven't even sealed the deal yet. Yeah, he doing. And he's stepping up, knowing that it's a possibility that one day he will have to take care of the woman that he's getting ready to marry. So he's becoming that. That's his about. Mama, yeah, he's becoming what his mama said. He's gonna have to take care of, like he took care of his other wife that was strung out. Now he might have to take care of by. But like his mama said. You got to find your own life outside of taking care of folk because yeah. that's going to be your identity for the rest of your freaking life. But if that happens before he finds his own life, that's going to consume him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, he can hire like nurses and stuff like that to come in. But most time I'm pride. Hell no. Ain't no nurses coming up in here taking care. Of I got this. That's what I got this. No, you don't. You don't. You mama, what you called it was like that. Um, I can't remember his name, but he used to work with work with us when we worked um downtown. Um, the DJ, and his uh -huh. wife, yeah, and he came to work. He DJ and took care of his wife. That's what he did for what about, about, about five six years, years. until yep, she passed away. Yep, good man. Yeah, good man. But you could see but it you weighing. Could see it. You could see the weight on him. He tried to play it off, but you could see the weight on him. He didn't. He didn't have a life. Mm -mm. Matter of yeah. fact, I need to look him up, check him out, and yeah. check on him. See, yeah. I forgot all about him for a minute. Yeah. William. That's yeah. a name. Yeah, William. That's right. So, um, back to the task at hand. Yeah. So, Blue, 
Dollar don't came over there to get blue. Because I guess since last week, you are not the father. They don't drew the line in the sand. Said we're going to have to work this thing out. So she came and she going to teach him how to ride his bike. Well, that didn't go well. Because mm -hmm. Blue got frustrated and he said, Buck this, but I can't bike. do this. Uh -huh. I can't do this. And the first thing I said in my head is, he going to go run into his daddy about mm -hmm. teaching him how to ride this bike. Mm -hmm. And Po Dollar, I don't like Dollar. But I give her her credit when she when when she deserves it. Yeah, I give her it. credit for trying. Yeah, trying to help him out. So later on, she took Blue back home, and Blue started complaining about riding the bike or whatever. And Ralph Angel was like, "Nah, we ain't even gonna have this. We ain't quitters around here. We we gonna get on here. We gonna learn to ride this bike." And he kind of looked at Dollar, and I was like, "Ralph Angel, don't don't push her out of this moment. You know, go ahead and invite her in this moment yeah. because she's gonna have to learn." how to be that way with Blue too. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the one that's always teaching him new things. Mama's gonna have to learn how to incorporate some new things into his life too. Mm -hmm. So even Blue was like, you know what? Both of y'all hold, hold me. me. I up. need all uh -huh. the help I can get when I ride this bike. <laughs> Look. So last time this almost killed me. <laughs> so I'm gonna need one on this. I'm gonna need two armor barrels. Yeah. <laughs> So they both taught him how to ride the bike and Blue was having his moment. And you know when a kid first ride, they learn how to ride their bike. They out there for hours. Uh huh. Hours. Yep. I remember it. So they were sitting on the porch, you know, just having a real mommy and daddy moment. And he was like, you know what? When I get off of parole, I'm gonna take him around the world. We are gonna yeah. go Disney World, land, all of them. We gonna said, see yeah, all the go mice. I said, now, now you talking, bro? I said, okay. And Dollar was like, you know what? We we should go ahead and do you. We can do the split. Let's go ahead and do the fifty fifty. I said, about time. Yeah, that they came. Yeah. I was scared when the conversation came up. I said, let's 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 not have this conversation again. Yeah. And he was like, all right. Now, let me go ahead and tell this part, because I think a whole bunch <laughs> of y'all don't misunderstood where we was coming from. When we were talking about Dollar and this whole Ralph Angel thing. I ain't never said keep her out. Nah. But what I am saying is for the sake of Blue, mm -hmm. Blue only knows Ralph Angel yeah. and that side of the family. Mm -hmm. It would have kind of been different if Dollar's mom had been in the picture when Dollar wasn't. Yeah. But what we're not going to do is you get clean, you kind of finesse a little bit, and then all of a sudden, you boom, 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 and we start juggling this child. Yeah. No, that stuff needs to be um, mm -hmm. eased into. Yep. The boy is already showing signs of psychiatric distress. Exactly, and uh, and 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 to confirm that, because you always need a confirmation on what you say when she was trying to teach him how to ride the bike. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for her to do it. Exactly. He had to be eased into. So both of them had to be both eased into. Yeah. Uh huh. So both of them had to do it. So yeah. But I ain't agree with what Ralph Angel did when she had her weekend. And he was like, no, it's by party. No, no, no. Uh -huh. No, it was still her weekend. I don't mm -hmm. care who party it was. Exactly. If you want to got to a funeral, then let that woman have her time with her son. That y'all agreed on. Yeah. So then the, the ego started. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. And Ralph Angel, he, he, he ain't skit sometime either. But what we ain't going to do is use Blue as collateral damage. Yeah. And I'm so glad that Ralph Angel said that he wanted to show Blue something different. Yeah. Because I know, like, when we was coming up, we had, we didn't see much. I mean, we, you know, I, my parents, they tried their best to do with what they had. You know, we wanted to go to Disney World, and, you know, Disneyland. Cause you know, all the advertising come on TV. We want to do all that stuff. But they really had had the money. But, you know, growing up, you know, a dream without a plan, you're going to fail anyway. Huh. So, you know, I hope that Ralph ain't just talking, yeah. but he got a plan because you just can't say I'm going to take blue here and there and other. It costs money. <laughs> you think you work two, three jobs now? <laughs> uh huh. But if you get a plan together and say, you know, I'm going to set aside $50 every month for the next three years to take my boy to Disney World. You gonna change, need it for that. Uh, and it gonna change, yeah. More, maybe ten years. This it costs a lot to see that, right? And then that. And then you get there and you don't even see him. That's a whole other story, right there. That's why I got some free tickets waiting for me now. Cause yeah. I said, uh, uh, I paid all this money and this rat ain't come out here and see me. <laughs> what? How we go all the way up there? And we ain't see no characters except for the Incredibles, though. Yep. Really? 
So all right now, Ralph. Yeah, so a vision without a plan is just a dream. It's just you running your goddamn mouth. <laughs> so against Charlie's advice, Michael went over there to see Aunt. Because Charlie was like any other mama, which you, no, no, no. Don't, Don't put yourself over there. over there in that situation. Well, Michael gets over there and Aunt, you know, at first he was kind of acting like, mm, why, why you are you here? here? But then he was like, you know what? It's all good. I made a decision. It was my letter that got me caught. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and do what the, the lawyer said. I probably can get away with just doing six, six months. months. You know, I'm going to miss out on a whole lot of stuff. And a whole lot of stuff I was lining up, I'm not going to be able to do. But when I get out, I'm going to have all the girls. Because, uh -huh. you know, they like a little So I always go back to the girls. Yeah, that's a silver line, huh? Yeah. And, you know, Michael was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there for you. I'm going to keep in contact with you. Da, 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 da. And he seemed like, okay, we did this. I'm going to take it. And I'm going to move on for it, from it. But here, this is what's confused me about Michael. Michael still isn't getting it, in my opinion. But he's trying, though. Well, because he... Aunt was like, it was stupid. And Michael was like, no, it wasn't stupid. It was a mistake. Yeah. But it was stupid. Yeah, it was stupid. It was done. It was, it was, it was for a good cause, but it was executed in the wrong way. Yeah, so I'm like, that talk you had with Nova didn't didn't resonate to make you realize that that wasn't the way to do it. That wasn't a mistake. That was stupid. Yeah, but I, I do, I, I I don't like how his other friends is doing it. Yeah. How they was like, we ain't texting, we ain't con everybody gonna keep their head down. And that's usually what happens when we get into stuff together and it don't go wrong. If you didn't get caught, you put your head in the sand. But Michael, so I appreciate Michael stepping up and be like, nah. I'm not going to put my head in the sand and watch Aunt go through this by herself, regardless of what my mama say. Because after all, it was all of us that was on that land. But I wonder if Michael's eyes actually opening up. Because remember, old boy was telling him, you here with us, but this is what your purpose is right here. You watching us in the fight. You ain't but even in, in the pictures yeah. in the fight with us. Hold on. So... But he was with y'all at the place. I mean, he been there with y'all. I mean, he didn't want y'all friends when y'all got on the basketball court. But, but anyway, but at this point, like he said, like Michael said, all of them is scared. And none of them don't want to go to jail. I mean, yeah, I'm with you on that yeah, one. Yeah, so. I want you in two minutes colors. But anywho, well, at the end of the episode, after everybody... <clears throat> Had the moment to take in what happened at the council meeting. We saw Prosper come home with Charlie. Charlie goes upstairs. You know, she just can't speak at this moment. And Prosper sits back and he pulls out his flip phone. And he do just like my mama do. do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. And he calls his daughter. And she was like, he was like, basically, skit, don't hit the fan down here. I'm going to surrender to this process. I think it's about time you come, come and get me. me. I said, God. We just got Prosper back. He looking good. I bet mm -hmm. you he smell like brew. Yep. I bet you he all right. And we going to do this. We going to break up the family. Yep. I'm done. I, I, but I, I think all of them should move. If Go all to California. If, if all of them move, how the jail going to be supported? If uh, because they're gonna need them there because the majority, I think it's majority more black folk there. Like Kanye said, houseway. How don't none of them got no money, just like except for look, Charlie in, in Hollywood. Look, they better be just like our uh, Mexican brothers and sisters, they had about 20 years in one house. We're not better, humble enough for that yet. We well, they <laughs> better humble themselves for that because <laughs> what they get ready to go through if that jail come there, they're gonna wish. They were bumped up like that. Straight Same to come. <laughs> so come on with an exit strategy. Come on out of Egypt. Go to the Red Sea. You know, Moses might not be You're there. Right. But <laughs> I'm going to bed. I'm off tomorrow, y'all. Cause my birthday on Saturday. Yeah. And I said I'm gonna go ahead and take off tomorrow and I'm gonna I'm gonna I say I'm gonna sleep in. But you think I tried last Friday, it didn't work. Yeah, but straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla.